Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the Catholic Mass on this the Thursday of the fifth week of Easter. My name is Father Charles Zock, and I'm joined at the altar by Deacon Larry Lumina. Let us begin in song reflecting on the Lord Jesus Christ's discourse on love at the Last Supper. We remember how you loved us to your death, and still we celebrate, for you are with us here, and we believe that we will see you when you come in your Spirit. Amen. Let's once again recall our shortcomings and our sins and turn to a loving and caring God for forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, mercy. have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. O God, by whose grace, those sinners, we are made just, and though pitiable, made blessed. Stand, we pray, by your works, stand by your gifts, that those justified by faith may not lack the courage of perseverance through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After much debate had taken place, Peter got up and said to the apostles and the presbyters, my brothers, you are well aware that from the early days God made his choice among you that through my mouth the Gentiles would hear the word of God and the gospel and believe. And God, who knows the heart, bore witness by granting them the Holy Spirit, just as he did to us. He made no distinction between us and them, for by faith he purified their hearts. Why then are you now putting God to the test by placing on the shoulders of the disciples a yoke that neither our ancestors nor we had been able to bear? On the contrary, we believe that we are saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus in the same way as they the whole assembly fell silent, and they listened, while Paul and Barnabas described the signs and wonders God had worked among the Gentiles through them. After they had fallen silent, James responded, My brothers, listen to me. Simeon has described how God first concerned himself with acquiring from among the Gentiles a people for 
his name. The words of the prophets agree with this, for it is written, After this I shall return and rebuild the fallen hut of David. From its ruins I shall rebuild it and raise it up again, so that the rest of humanity may seek out the Lord, and even all the Gentiles on whom my name is invoked. Thus says the Lord, who accomplished these things, known from old. It's my judgment, therefore, that we ought to stop troubling the Gentiles who turn to God, but tell them by letter to avoid pollution from idols, unlawful marriage, the meat of strangled animals, and blood. For Moses, for generations now, has had those who proclaim him in every town, and he has been read in the synagogues every Sabbath. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Sing, along, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Announce his salvation day after day. Tell his glory among the nations, among the peoples his wondrous deeds. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He has made the world firm, not to be moved. He governs the people with equity. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Alleluia. says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy might be in you and your joy might be complete. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. This morning I was reading Bishop Barron's reflection on this particular Gospel reading, and it, it, it really clarified it for me. Um, he said, look at two words in this Gospel, commandment and joy. And when I heard and read him say joy, it brought me back to a former priest that I had and really enjoyed, who always, always preached joy. And when he would preach on a homily on joy, he would always have a bottle of ultra-concentrated joy dishwashing soap, and he'd hold it up. He loved the acronyms. Joy was Jesus over you. That is the path to true joy. The message was true then, it's true now. Joy is what people seek. Thomas Aquinas said that's what everybody's looking for. Happiness, and ha the root of happiness is joy. And where do we find that joy? In Jesus. The other word was commandment. We follow Jesus' commandments and we attain that joy because we are in the right order. Our minds, 
our wants, our needs are ordered correctly, number one is God. And then everything else falls into like a pyramid shape. And if we follow that path, we will, we will achieve that joy. But it's when we stray and decide we know what we need on our own. And maybe something looks good to us. And it doesn't bring us joy. Ever bought a new car and then got home and, gee, I wish I hadn't spent that kind of money on a vehicle. Or got to the store and did an impulse buy, thinking this is going to make me just so happy just to have this. And you get home and it's like, hmm, it does nothing for you. And I think I've told you this before. I've wanted a Harley Davidson my entire, since I was 12. And at one point, and I can't, I could go buy one. And I thought, what good is it going to do me? I'll probably kill myself. But it wouldn't bring me real joy. It'd sit in the garage and I'd have that, that buyer's remorse because it's not something that brings true joy. It brings a momentary bit of happiness, maybe a little bit of pride and ego because I've achieved something. I'd rather want it and not have it, right? But with God, we can want it and have it as long as we follow the commandment. And what was that? To love God, number one. Love your neighbor as yourself. Everything else just falls into place if we follow that, that simple prescription. But we find as humans, it's not that simple. And we know that this isn't a message for an exclusive club. This is a message for everybody. Everybody. And if someone says, I don't know, you don't belong in the Christian community, shame. Shame on that person. Because the message of Christ is for absolutely everyone, and we hear that in our first reading. And so we think about that, and we, when we leave here today, we think, how can I order my life correctly that I am doing the will of Jesus to attain the joy that I truly know I need and want? And so we do things to that end that keep us in that right order so that we can get the true, the true happiness, the true joy, that Jesus intends for us. Let us make these petitions to our Heavenly Father. We pray that we take Jesus at his word. Remain in my love, keep my commandments, and you will know that joy is complete in you we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray the same for all of those who have received the Easter sacraments, those who were baptized, those who have received First Communion this past weekend, those yet to be confirmed, that they take Jesus at his word as well and remain faithful in his love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we call upon the Lord for his healing touch for the people of India that are so devastated by nearly 300,000 new cases of COVID daily and thousands of death and short of any treatment or facilities. We make all of these our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. This will become for us the bread of life. Blessed God. By this mystery of water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. This will become our spiritual drink. Blessed Lord, wash away my iniquity, 
cleanse me of my sin. Sisters and brothers, we pray together that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, Grant, we pray, that as we have come to know the truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up, O Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore overcome with paschal joy Every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the heights. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the heights. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Alexander and Peter, our bishops, with all the clergy and your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life 
and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus the Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. May this mingling of the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Communion and fun. Christ died for all, that those who live may live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and is risen.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a couple announcements. First of all, I will be leaving tomorrow morning early and will be back for Saturday morning Mass in church. Uh, Father Julio will take good care of you on the weekend Masses and Monday through Friday here. Uh, I'm going on a vacation. Um, I don't know if I need it, but God thinks I do. I try to listen. Uh, on Friday, Deacon Larry will have here tomorrow morning a, um, a prayer service and liturgy of the Word. Uh, there will be no Mass tomorrow. Both Father Julio and I are occupado, have other things that we, he's finishing his retreat. And so tomorrow at noon, we have food boxes again. Um, we're told that we may get a change out of the hot dogs eventually. So we may have baloney instead. But other than that, they're great food boxes. It's a big, big step up. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. We remember how you loved us to your death. And still we celebrate, for you are with us here. And we believe that we will see you when you come in your glory, Lord. We remember, we celebrate.